ज्ञानाचलाखा चक्षुरून मिलिधाम येना थस्मै श्री गुरवे नमा नमा ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमथे भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नित्यनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेषा सन्यवादी भस्तारिने वंशकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति भावनीभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंदाधार श्रीवासदिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण It's my honor and pleasure to be with you today. Before beginning my talk, I want to show you these books that were just written. Two of my senior god sisters, Vishaka Devi. who was one of the closest personal associates of Srila Prabhupad for 5 years and 11 months please if you haven't bought this book it's a great treasure house of memories of Srila Prabhupad an incredible story of transformation intertwined with Prabhupad's most essential teachings and our illustrious god sister sitala devi has been working on this book for several decades the glorious life of shrila narottam das thakur they're both at the same table just outside and of course our very esteemed god brother sham sundar prabhu is outside eager to sign chasing rhinos with the swami if you are so intelligent and fortunate enough to go on the subject i've been given is the secret of servant leadership could everyone hear could everyone hear here <laughs> they are requesting louder this seems the sound system people can't hear <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you. It's here. Sh 
Shri Mayapur Navadvip Dham is the supreme abode of the Lord that is especially the place where everyone, even the universe, the creations, and all existence's greatest leaders are all eager to be servants. It was here that Sri Adwaita Prabhu seeing the suffering condition of the souls in the age of Kali. He was not just seeing what was around him at that time, but he could see into the future. He said, Ah, Shiva, the original Shiva of the spiritual world, he's Karana Dakshayi Mahavishnu, the super soul of the entire cosmic manifestation. By his mere glance, he pregnates every living being within the Mahatattva. What is the power of his glance? Veda ham samatitani varatamanani chaujuna babashani chaputani mam tu veda nakashtana. He sees everything past, present, and future. He knows all beings. He sees us now. And he saw us even then. When he saw the condition of the people of this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the scholars, the illiterate, the wealthy, the poverty-stricken, poverty -stricken. he saw every person of every species of every race without understanding that we are eternal servants of Krishna. Jivera Swarupoy Krishnera Nityadas. Without understanding that our true nature and our highest potential is to awaken Krishna Prem, love for Krishna that is within our hearts, then we are in a pathetic suffering condition. In this material world, some people are suffering who know they're suffering. And other people are suffering who think they're happy. That's all there is. Dukalaya Mashashvatam. It is a place of suffering where everything is temporary. The eternal soul is trying to find pleasure, ananda mayo bhyashat, the pleasure of Krishna, of their love for Krishna. In these temporary fleeting experiences of material life, material sense enjoyment, The conception of control, power, wealth, accomplishment. The only true happiness is when Krishna is pleased with our efforts. Sri Adwaita Prabhu, he was feeling so much compassion for us. The super soul of the entire cosmic creation is feeling himself a servant of the Supreme Lord. And in his compassion, he was serving us, serving every living being, fasting, offering Ganga water, Tulsi leaves, and crying out with a loud, loud voice for Krishna to appear within this world. And he appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
along with his eternal associates from Goloka, Sri Balaramji, his first expansion, came as Nityananda Prabhu. Such a mood of service, Nityananda Prabhu. When he left Eka Chakra at the age of 12 years old, he traveled to different holy places for approximately 20 years, but there's no record that he ever preached to anyone. Brajendra Nandana Jai Satchi Shuta Hoilo She Balarama Hoilo Nitai. Krishna appeared as the mother, a son of Mother Sachi, and Balaram is Nityananda. They came especially for us to spread this message of Harinam Sankirtan as the greatest medicine for the ill of suffering. He knows everything. But yet, he never preached to anyone until he came here to Mayapur Dham, where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally instructed him, along with Haridas Thakur, go out to everyone and anyone you meet and give them this simple instruction. Worship Krishna. Hear about Krishna. Speak about Krishna. Chant the holy names of Krishna. Krishna is your mother. Krishna is your father. Krishna is your true wealth. Krishna is your life and soul. As soon as Nityananda Prabhu got that instruction as a servant of Lord Chaitanya, with such enthusiasm, he went everywhere, to everyone, sometimes falling on his knees, sometimes taking the dust of the feet of the most fallen souls and begging them with tears in their eyes, please accept my master's instruction. Chant the holy names of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya, he was always touching the lotus feet of Advaita Prabhu because he wanted to be his servant. He loved to serve him. But Advaita wouldn't, wouldn't be happy like that. He would always try to take Lord Chaitanya's dust. Ultimately, he had to make Lord Chaitanya angry to get Lord Chaitanya to chastise him. And then Adoita began to dance. He said, now you have accepted me as your servant. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Navadweep, the supreme controller of all controllers, the proprietor of everything that exists, the ultimate worshipable master of all living beings and all spiritual and material worlds. He takes the role of a devotee and he prays from his heart as his example to all of us that there is no higher aspiration than Gopi Bharaptur Padakamalayora Das 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 Anudas than to be the servant of the servant of the servant. Because that's what pleases Krishna. To love Krishna means to please Krishna. To please Krishna means to serve him. To serve him means to be the servant of his servants. Surita Sarava Bhutanam. Because Krishna is the most intimate, loving, well-wishing friend of every living being. To serve his children is his greatest happiness within this world. Srivas Thakur, his life and soul was simply serving the devotees. 
and trying to serve everyone. At Srivasangam, the great devotees were gathered together. They were having kirtan. Srivasangam is none different than the Ras Mandala. It's a manifestation of the place Krishna performs Ras Lila. And that was enacted among all the devotees during Sankirtan. This is the principle of the Kirtan with the Vaishnavas to follow these regulative principles, to receive Krishna consciousness, to share it amongst the devotees, and then as a community to share with the world. This principle of not feeling oneself proprietor, even though we have a serious leadership responsibility, is very much at the heart of all of our Vaishnava scriptures. In Ramayan, Ram left his kingdom and Sita left with him because they valued the higher principle of their example greater than being the king of Ayodhya. When he was living in a forest dressed in tree bark along with Sita and Lakshmana at Chitrakut on the banks of the Mandakini Ganga River in a lonely forest his younger brother Bharat, who was supposed to become the king, he refused. When he returned to Ayodhya and found out that Ram was exiled, he rejected it. He re rejected Kaikei, his own mother, who caused this. He had no aspiration except to serve. He went to Chitrakut. And from his heart of heart, he was begging Ram, you please be the king, and whatever time of exile, 14 years, I will stay here. Ram refused to go. He said, for the higher principle of the will of our father, and the example that sets that we are honoring our father, I must stay here. They argued. Valmiki Muni tells so many of the various um, debate content of this argument. But Ram would not budge. Where do we find a society like this? Where people are fighting each other to give the other the highest position. That's the way God likes to do things. So Bharat went back because it was ultimately Ram's will. And he ruled the whole kingdom. He took all the responsibility. Such a leader he was. He was really leading the entire Ayodhya, the world. But how did he do it? He kept Ram's wooden sandals on the throne. For 14 years he never spent a night in the palace. He lived in a place called Nandigram, outside of Ayodhya, in a little straw hut, which was not even the type of straw hut that Ram was living in. And he wore only tree bark. And he only ate roots and fruits. He performed all his responsibilities with the spirit that everything belongs to Ram and I am the servant. All these people, every citizen is Ram's child and I must serve them all, physically, emotionally, spiritually, 
everything is for the pleasure of Ram. That's the example that the scriptures give us of what a leader is. Obviously we cannot imitate. But it is the basis of our spiritual progress how sincerely we follow in their footsteps. Lord Chaitanya, when he was in Navadweep, of course not just when, he's eternally in Navadweep, in his Leela as Nimai Pandit, he was the greatest of all scholars. He defeated Keshav Kashmiri, the world champion scholar. But yet, when his guru, Ishwarapuri, came to Navadweep, Nimai accepted defeat from him. Nimai did not externally spread the Sankirtan movement. He didn't even begin the Sankirtan movement until after he was initiated by Ishwara Puri. Why did he accept Ishwara Puri as his guru? That's a great lesson too. Madhavendra Puri had many great disciples who were Paramahamsas, eternal associates from Goloka. But Lord Chaitanya wanted to give an instruction by his own example. Servant of the servant. We read in the Anjalila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita when Madhavendra Puri was on his deathbed. His last weeks in this world, Ishwara Puri was his personal servant. For months and months actually. And Madhavendra Puri, his pastime which is so relishable to all of us because the message is so relishable. He couldn't walk. His Ishwara Puri, who was a great scholar, a great sannyasi, he was with his own hands lovingly cleaning the urine and the stool and all these other types of substances from the body of his guru. Such a menial service. Something you can pay someone to do, but not with love. He did it with love. He did it with gratitude. To Ishwara Puri, this was the greatest treasure in all of creation, to serve his guru. If it means cleaning his urine and stool, or if it means preaching his message, whatever pleases you, my, my Lord, that is my life and soul. That is my only true happiness. And during those times with Madhavendra Puri, he was always chanting Krishna's names, reciting Krishna's pastimes for the pleasure of Madhavendra Puri. And Madhavendra Puri was so pleased with him, with his service attitude, that he blessed Ishwara Puri. He said, my child, may Krishna bless you, that you be a great devotee and lover of Krishna. And with that blessing, he became the greatest of the Acharyas. So great that the Supreme Personality of God in and his most munificent of all incarnations became his servant. When Lord Chaitanya went to Gaya, He served Ishwara Puri the same way 
in spirit as Ishwara Puri served Madhavendra Puri. He cooked for him. He cleaned for him. He massaged him. His feet, his legs. He begged with tears in his eyes of humility for initiation. And it was at that time Ishwara Puri told him to establish the Sankirtan movement. This was revealed in Varanasi when Lord Chaitanya was with Prakashananda Saraswati, the great leader of the Mayavadi scholars and sannyasis. He took Lord Chaitanya by the hand. Prakashananda Saraswati was constantly blaspheming Lord Chaitanya. And somehow he was invited to the same lunch gathering as Prakashananda Saraswati. He came, Lord Chaitanya came a little late. Sometimes sannyasis do that. <laughs> and when he came, Prakashananda was sitting on a higher platform with his associates and Lord Chaitanya sat down on a lowest position in the very place where people wash their feet before coming in. But he illuminated the room with his effulgence. And Prakashananda, Prakashananda saw him and said, Please come and sit with us. Why are you so morose? And the Supreme Absolute Truth, Parabrahman, from his heart, he says, I am not fit to sit with you. You are all great scholars. Prakashananda Saraswati came down and took Lord Chaitanya by the hand and brought him up. And he asked him a simple question. You are a sannyasi in the Shankar Sampradaya. Your duty is to be with other sannyasis of your, of your group. You're from the Bharati Sampradaya. You should be with us, studying Vedanta. Why? Why are you wasting your time so miserably chanting and dancing like with all these religious fanatics? Lord Chaitanya, with such sincerity, he said, my guru told me that I was a fool and I cannot understand Vedanta. He told me I should chant the holy names of Krishna. <laughs> and I took that order in my life and soul and I started chanting and I, I began to experience symptoms of ecstatic love. And I went back to my guru and said, what's happening to me? Am I going mad? My Guru Maharaj said, this is very good. And then he gave the instruction. You should chant the holy names of Krishna in the company of devotees and you should spread, you should share this great gift of the Sankirtan movement with all the world. Lord Chaitanya did not begin that Sankirtan movement until he received that instruction from his guru. In other words, he wanted to show us, however great we are, we're always a servant. Real greatness has to be calculated 
by our humility, our detachment, and our eagerness to be servant of the servant of the servant. Our Namacharya is Haridas Thakur. Harinama, Harinam, Harinam, Eva Kevalam, Kalona, Steva, Nasteva, Nasteva, Gatiranyata. This particular verse was given to Lord Chaitanya by Ishwara Puri. He said, You should always keep this verse in your heart. That to achieve love of God in this age of Kali, there is no alternative than the chanting of the holy names. process of Nam Sankirtan is the prime benediction for all humanity. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana. It was Lord Chaitanya's mission. Who did Lord Chaitanya make the Acharya for all time for this chanting of Hare Krishna? Haridas Thakur. What was his qualification? He had no material qualifications. In a time in India where what your caste was, what your social position was, was so very, very important, he put Haridas in the lowest social position. He was an outcast in a very poverty-stricken state. But he had a great taste for the chanting of the holy names. When Haridas disappeared from this world, Lord Chaitanya said that this entire world has lost its crown jewel, Haridas Thakur. What was the example he established? This is very important. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and our beloved Srila Prabhupada, they gave us this instruction to chant at least 16 rounds. And the rest of the day, to live in the mood of the servant of the servant by actively serving as far as possible. Because it's that service attitude that actually gives quality to our chanting. During the Mahaprakash Leela here in Mayapur at Srivasangam, Lord Chaitanya was giving benedictions to all his devotees. He was revealing himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, something very rare. Generally, if anyone called Lord Chaitanya God, he would hold his ears with his hands and cry, Vishnu, 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 never ever contaminate my life by calling me God. What an offense this is. I am the servant of the servant of the Lord. And that's the way he lived. And he gave, he gave the greatest appreciation. He became the servant, especially of those who were the most humble, the most dedicated, the most compassionate. The Mahaprakash Lord Chaitanya said to Haridas Thakur, when I touch you, I become purified. Haridas, he said, I'm the most fallen. I'm the most contaminated. But you are so merciful. 
in another place, Haridas Thakur said that you have so many servants, thousands and thousands of devotees, they are all fit to sit on top of my head. I'm the least. What was the benediction Haridas prayed for? And this is serious, because Lord Chaitanya was fulfilling any desire any devotee had. If Lord Chaitanya was right here today and were to look at you with his beautiful, loving, lotus-like eyes and say, I will, I will bestow upon you anything you ask, just ask. What would you ask for? The person who Lord Chaitanya empowered to teach us how to chant the holy names, he only asked for one thing. He said, for a long time I have only one desire. In any birth I take, I want the remnants of the food that had been eaten by your devotees. When your devotees chew on their food and cast it away, let me get those remnants to honor them, to worship them, to be purified by them. Let me be a dog outside the house of your devotees so when they throw their plates out, I could get their remnants. Haridas became very ashamed after asking this. He said, I have no right to ask for such an exalted benediction as this. But you are so merciful. Let me worship your devotees and be the servant of the servant of your devotees. This was the mood of Haridas Thakur. We cannot imitate it. But if we really want to please the Lord as we're chanting the holy name, we have to aspire for this spirit of devotion. Otherwise, why is he proclaimed by Lord Chaitanya himself the Nam Acharya? He's teaching by his example. We could live in a cave. That's not such a difficult thing. We could fast. That's not such a difficult thing. We could chant 192 rounds a day. That's more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't do it sustainably with a taste to please Krishna unless we follow these preliminary principles of Haridas Thakur. Trinarapi Suni Chena. In Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, when Haridas Thakur asks for the benediction that I just spoke, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, in his commentary, he writes that Haridas is begging, praying, Lord Chaitanya, please let me Give me this blessing that I could be more humble than a blade of grass. That I could be more tolerant of a tree and offer all respect to others and not expect it for oneself. It's because this is what he based his values of life on, Kirtaniya Sadahari. He had that taste given by Krishna to chant the names constantly. Haridas Thakur is our leader. And he led so many people. He was preaching. He was inspiring. He had so many thousands and thousands of people who were transformed. That one prostitute from Benapol, she became a great saint. He was famous. Haridas was very, very famous for his preaching among the innocent. 
but he had no false ego. Why? Because he saw every living being as a child of Krishna. And if I want to serve Krishna, I must do everything I can to honor, respect, and give bhakti to his children. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, of all the Vaishnavas, he was the one to cho who was chosen to write Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He explains how that happened. He was instructed by the devotees to write Lord Chaitanya's life and teachings. He felt himself completely unqualified. He went to each and every devotee in Vrindavan where he was staying to beg with all humility for their permission and their blessings. He was a profound scholar. He was already in his 90s. He was a very senior person. How Chaitanya Charitamrita is composed is such supremely advanced Bengali and Sanskrit poetry. But yet he felt himself unqualified. He received instruction, just as Lord Chaitanya received instruction. Just as Nityananda Prabhu received instruction. And after he received instruction, he went to each and every devotee begging for their permission. And everyone with their hearts they gave permission. Some of the devotees like Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Lokanath Goswami, they said, I will give permission, but you should not, you should not write about me. And he honored that. And after he got the permission of all the devotees, then he went to Madan Mohan Temple. He would not approach Krishna to get his blessings until he got the blessings of all the Vaishnavas. Why? That's very instructive. Because those who understand Vaishnavism, you cannot approach Krishna directly. Because that's not what Krishna wants. We discussed two days back Raghunath Das Goswami when he asked for Nityananda Prabhu's blessings why did Nityananda Prabhu give him those blessings? Because he served all the Vaishnavas to their full satisfaction and he went to each of them and begged for their mercy from his heart Then he was blessed to be an eternal associate of Lord Chaitanya. Similarly, Kaviraj Goswami, after receiving the heartfelt permission of all the devotees, making them happy by his service attitude, then he went before Madan Mohan. And the garland dropped. And it was the servant of Madan Mohan, the Purjari, who took that garland and placed it on Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's neck. So even the blessing came through a devotee. And all the devotees in the, in the temple room cheered. And then he understood, Krishna wants me to do this. And while he's writing Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, he's revealing his heart. In one particular sloka, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he says, I take the dust of the feet of every devotee on top of my head. 
the great Paramhamsa Acharyas, and even the brand new devotee that's just coming to the path of bhakti. I take all of their dust and my, of their feet and worship. Putting on a head means you worship them. Means you sincerely want to serve them. This idea of putting dust on head is not just a physical thing. Anybody could put straw between their teeth. <laughs> but when we read in the scriptures when Rupa and Sanatan would put straw between their teeth, that's totally humbling oneself before someone. This was the mood of Krishna Das Kaviraj. He's honoring every devotee, even those who have an artis, because they've taken to the path of bhakti. These are leaders. These are truly spiritual leaders. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur the way he would greet people, whether they be great Paramhamsa Babaji's, sannyasis, senior disciples, new disciples, new people, dasos me. I am your servant. It is recorded that when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada was in South India, Many people were coming to see him. And because there were many people, he was utilizing his time valuably. Someone would come in, they may have been a scholar, they may have been a farmer. He would ask, are you a devotee of Krishna? If they would say, yes, I am a devotee of Krishna. He would respectfully say, I'm sorry, I, I don't have much time. When he would ask that question, are you a devotee of Krishna? If the person replied, I am the servant of the servant, I'm the devotee of the devotee of Krishna. Then he would, yes, I have time, let us speak. King Prataparudra, he was not allowed to meet Lord Chaitanya. In fact, he spoke Lord Chaitanya as an example for others of how a sannyasi should be with materialistic people, especially according to the customs of that time. He said, meeting a materialistic person with a role like a king is more abominable than drinking poison. But he's strict. That's what he said when Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya tried to make an appointment. And later Ramananda Rai came. Ramananda Rai said, I was the governor of Madras under King Prataparudra. When you came to visit in Govur, Rajmundri, you asked me to resign and come to Puri to, to be with you. I told the king, I want to resign <laughs> and be with Lord Chaitanya in Puri. As soon as King Prataparuja heard your name, he became filled with ecstatic love. He said, you are so fortunate. Lord Chaitanya is calling for you to be a servant. I not only grant you leave, but I will give you a full salary for the rest of your life. Leave means permanent. Ramananda Rai was so much pleased, grateful to Ramananda Rai. And when Lord Chaitanya saw how Ramananda Rai was so happy with the king, Lord Chaitanya's heart changed. He said, because the king has pleased you by his service, Krishna will accept him. And Lord Chaitanya quoted from the Adi Purana, 
Mam Bhakta Puja Bhyadika. Where Krishna tells one who calls himself my devotee is not really my devotee. But one who is the devotee of my devotee is truly my devotee. Later, King Prataparuja was sweeping the street before Jagannath's chariot. Sweeping before God, sweeping for, all, for the pleasure of all the devotees, as a service to all the pilgrims, everyone. Lord Chaitanya was seeing his heart. And during the Ratiyatra ceremony in that garden near Ayatota, Gundicha, King Prataparuja put on the robes of a mendicant. He disguised himself by the mercy of Ramananda Rai and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. They said, go in now. Lord Chaitanya is laying down. He's very tired. Massage his legs. Massage his feet. And chant for him the Gopi Gita. The prayers of the gopis for Krishna in their love and separation. Now, just earlier the same day, King Prataparuja was standing back behind many, many people watching Lord Chaitanya dance. And somehow or other, in Lord Chaitanya's ecstatic dance in the mood of Sri Radha, he, f he fell down unconscious right in the arms of King Prataparudra. And as soon as he touched the king, Lord Chaitanya looked up and saw him and looked, looked so disgusted. He said, abominable, I have been touched by a materialistic person. King Prataparudra was very much... And the devotees told King Prataparuja, actually, he's very pleased with you. <laughs> but he's setting an example for others. When Lord Chaitanya says something like that, it's very strong. So now Ramananda Rai is saying, go in and massage his legs and feet, he's sleeping. <laughs> he had such faith in the mercy of the devotees. And as he was chanting Gopi Gita, Lord Chaitanya got up and he said, you are giving me so much nectar. Lord Chaitanya embraced him again and again and again. He, he soaked his body with his tears. And finally he asked King Prataparudra, you are giving me so much blessing. Who are you? He's in disguise. <laughs> you cannot tell a lie to the absolute truth. He spoke the truth from the core of his heart. And please listen, because this really is essential to our spiritual progress. King Prataparuja with all sincerity and honesty, he replied, I am the servant of the servant of your servants. And my only aspiration is to be the servant of the servant of your servants. He didn't consider himself a king. He performed the role of a king magnanimously, efficiently. He was so powerful. When the Mughal armies came, they could not conquer Orissa. At the time of King Prataparudra, he was so powerful. He ruled his kingdom so well. But never thinking, I'm the proprietor, I'm the controller, I'm the king. He understood what leadership is. 
I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, he had his court system. Yes, he punished criminals. Yes, he dealt with taxes and everything else. Much heavier burden of leadership than any of us could imagine being the king. But his spirit, servant leadership, the very heart of devotion, Just yesterday, day before yesterday, one of my dear God sisters, Kusha Devi, she told me a wonderful story about Srila Prabhupada. In Hawaii, in the United States, in the early 70s, the temple was going through a very serious crisis. There was a terrible blow to devotees' faith. One of their leaders really disappointed them. And they were left with practically nothing. The morale, the morale of the devotees, because they were all quite new devotees, was really struggling. Srila Prabhupada personally came there with his own hands. He went into the kitchen and cooked a wonderful feast for everyone and personally served it out. The devotees' enthusiasm their faith, their morale, were the highest of their lives. Because Prabhupada cared about them so much. He showed his care according to what was most effective. He went into the kitchen, he cut the vegetables, he rolled the puri dough, he added the spices, he cooked it. He offered it. He served it. He was so eager and so happy to serve all the devotees. Have any of you in the room today ever had prasad that Srila Prabhupada cooked with his own hands? Please raise your hands. It's very rare. I never have either. <laughs> Prasad that was cooked with the pure, unmotivated love and compassion of Srila Prabhupada, offered to Krishna by Srila Prabhupada. But he did it all in such a quantity for all the devotees. And those devotees who happen to be there, even today, over 40 years later, it's a highlight of their life that nourishes with so much faith and inspiration and so much courage to overcome all obstacles. Because this was the love, this was the care of their leader. At New Bandavan in 1976, I was sitting in a darshan with Srila Prabhupada. There was about 25 devotees. It was outside in a lawn. Srila Prabhupada was sitting in a beautiful seat. There were many photos of those outside darshans. And Prabhupada would answer questions. It was kind of cold that night. There was young, one young girl, a resident of New Vrindavan at the time. Her name was Gopalasya Priya. She's still there. 
she was just sitting in the audience, and she's just sitting in the grass with everyone else. And she didn't have warm clothes. Srila Prabhupada was speaking high philosophy. And then he looked at the temple president and he said, why doesn't she have warm clothes? She's very humble. She will never ask for them. But as the leader, you must understand what these devotees need and provide. Not only did Srila Prabhupada say it, but he cared that much. He recognized, she didn't say a word, but Prabhupada recognized she was cold. He expected his leaders to take the responsibility, to care so much, even if somebody doesn't ask, we know what they need. When Srila Prabhupada came here to Mayapur for the first Gaur Purnima festival, Dan, Dananjai Prabhu tells the story. The Lotus building was still kind of under construction and there was nothing else. And devotees were just sleeping kind of on rooftops. And Srila Prabhupada, in the middle of the night, was walking around to see how the devotees were doing. Did they have proper mosquito nets? He was so, he was so concerned with the health of the devotees that the devotees were getting satisfying prasad, that the devotees were getting appropriate accommodations. In the, in the mid-70s, when Krishna Balaram Temple opened in Vrindavan, there was no guest house like Krishna Balaram guest house. It's very changed these days. Prabhupada, these young American boys and girls, he would call them European, Western people, they're willing to endure any austerity to serve me. But when they come to Vrindavan, they shouldn't suffer, they should be happy. So he arranged a guest house where devotees could have simple accommodations but be comfortable. And he was very concerned. Even in his last days, when he couldn't eat practically anything, he couldn't even sit up. He was inquiring what kind of prasad is the devotees getting? Are they happy? One of my dear God brothers told in Mayapur during a festival during Guru Puja, leaders and devotees from all over the world were chanting Sri Guru Charana Padma, glorifying Srila Prabhupada. And this devotee had some sort of infection on his foot. And Srila Prabhupada called him over and so what, this is while everyone's going, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, he's saying, what's wrong with your foot? He saw a little bandage on it. The devotee didn't want to say anything, but Prabhupada was asking, he said, nothing Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, no, what is it? It's an infection. And Prabhupada wrote down, he wrote down the medicine he should take and gave it to him. While everybody's worshiping Prabhupada's lotus feet, Prabhupada's serving the foot of one of his disciples. And another one of my god brothers, when Prabhupada was in his last weeks in Vrindavan, they would carry him on a palanquin up steps to get sunlight on the terrace of his room. 
And this one devotee, he was just a young disciple. He had a boil on his leg. And as he was carrying Prabhupada, somehow or other, on the steps, he hit the boil on the steps, and it really hurt. And he tried to not show any pain, because Prabhupada was underneath him. You know, he was carrying Prabhupada up, but somehow or other there was a little shaking. And Prabhupada, who's about to leave the planet, he said, well, what is, what is, why did you do that? He said, nothing Prabhupada, nothing Prabhupada. Such so, some pain, and Prabhupada saw it. And again, he explained to him and wrote down. Except he didn't write down the meta. He wrote down the recipe. You know, take mustard oil and this and that and this spice and grind it. Great details, how to treat the boil. Yes, Srila Prabhupada. He smashed misconceptions. Like a great general, he ruled, he, he, he led the army of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ISKCON movement throughout the world. But he did it in such a mood of service to all of his disciples and every living entity. And it was because Srila Prabhupada endeared the hearts of his devotees by that love, by that compassion, by that care, and by the powerful, strong parampara, siddhanta, and philosophy that he carried. Devotees dedicated their lives. And what he invested through his love and his care and his compassion little parts and parcels of that is what his followers have and what's inspiring our whole movement. The more we take responsibility to leave, lead in this spirit, the more we progress in our Krishna consciousness. Yasya prasada bhagavat prasada the Panchatattva appeared in Mayapur to plunder the storehouse of love of God, to taste the sweetness of the contents of that love of God, and then to distribute it to the world. Lord Chaitanya was instructed by his guru. Nityananda Prabhu was instructed by Lord Chaitanya, as was Haridas. And similarly, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur instructed Prabhupada, and Prabhupada gave all credit to his guru and gave all credit to his disciples. And he's instructed each and every one of us, Srila Prabhupada with the same essential message. Take the name of Krishna in your heart sincerely. Take this message of his books in our hearts sincerely. Chant together, hear together, serve together, cooperate together as a society that really cares about one another sincerely and spread this Sankirtan movement throughout the world. Thank you very much.